So hi there, uh, and welcome to the US Web Design System Monthly Call for uh, midwinter, or is it late winter? It's definitely winter, February 2021. Uh, my name is Dan Williams, and I'm the US WDS product lead, and thanks for being here. We're trying a couple new things today. Uh, and one of those things is having a poll uh, at the beginning and, and the end of the call. So if you're on the Zoom app, you'll see a, you may see a poll window up on your screen. You can uh, answer it or dismiss it. Um, we'll have one at the beginning and another one at the end. Uh, if you are not in the Zoom app, you won't see uh, this poll. Uh, but if you are in Zoom for the web and you're here in the chat, I'll just read out what the poll questions are and uh, what the multiple choice answers are. If you want to enter that into the chat, you can. Um, so the first question is really on a scale of one to five, how familiar, how familiar are you with the design system? With one being this is pretty much my first time learning about the design system and five being I work with it all the time, contribute to the community, et cetera. An old pro. Um, and the second question is, what do you need to know uh, to get started with the design system? Um, like uh, recommended components, package installation instructions, uh, suggested system uh, and software requirements, uh, explanation of design tokens, what the return on investment of the design system might be, sample contract language, content design guidance, use cases and agency examples, uh, background research on our uh, design and design process, or something else. Uh, I'm going to leave that up uh, for just another couple of minutes as we, as we run through the agenda, and then uh, we'll end the poll and, uh, and show the results. So thanks. All right. Now, uh, uh, I want to mention that we're recording this monthly call, as you noticed. And as always, we're going to be posting this recording to YouTube. So. Uh, refrain from turning on your camera if even you're able to. Um, we'll manually turn off any cameras to ensure the recording doesn't show us uh, on camera. We'll be posting links and references into the chat as we go along, and I encourage you to ask questions in the chat at any time. Uh, if any member of our team can answer your question in the chat, we'll do so. Otherwise, there will definitely be some time for a question and answer uh, at the end of the hour. Also, be sure to introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, it's nice to know who's here. Um, so it's good to have you here today. And with that, let's get started. Um, today, we're going to spend some t a little bit of time uh, looking back and looking ahead. But we will kick off the call with a large group of new site launches. Um, and then a few quick product updates. Uh, spoiler, I'll be sad that we still haven't released the patch update that I promised last month. Uh, but then I'll hint at some great new stuff coming at the end of the month uh, and I'll be sort of happy again. And then we'll look ahead to our 2021 product roadmap. What we've learned over the last year, what we're thinking and what we'll try and accomplish uh, over the next uh, few months. And uh, if all goes as planned, uh, I'll wrap with, uh, with the slides part of this uh, a little earlier than I, than I usually do. And this should leave uh, a bit of time for Q&A. So if you felt like the Q&A has gotten short shrift over the last few calls, then this is the call for you. Uh, so uh, before we get started, maybe we can, uh, we, we might, we'll end the poll. Uh, we can publish the, uh, the results here. Uh, I was just, uh, I can just read them out a little bit. And uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, uh, the, uh, on a scale of one to five, how familiar are you with the design system? Uh, most of us are right in the, right in the, right in the big middle here. Um, uh, number three, we have kind of a bell curve here. A uh, few of us at one, a few of us at five, most of us right in the middle. Excellent. Uh, what do you need to know to get started with the design system? Uh, the, uh, the, the, the winner by uh, a few, certainly a uh, double digit percentage points, uh, use cases uh, and uh, agency examples. Um, uh, next up, uh, recommended components, um, content design guidance coming in really strong and uh, some others as, as you can see, if you look at those poll results. 
hopefully as we as we look through um, what we're planning to uh, do in 2021, uh, some of this will uh, be familiar. Some of these results may come back again. So I'm going to stop sharing the poll results. Uh, close this little thing out. And without any more jibber jabber, we can get started. Uh, first up, site launches. Uh, our last call was a pretty uh, light call for site launches, but we've more than made up for it in February with eight new design system powered sites. Starting it off with CDO.gov, uh, the Federal Chief Data Officers Council. And two uh, new sites from uh, DHS, ICE.gov, home of the United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and SecretService.gov, the official website of the United States Secret Service. We've also got uh, StopAlcoholAbuse.gov, the Interagency Coordinating Committee on the Prevention of Underage Drinking. Drought.gov, National Integrated Drought Information System, biomassboard.gov, the Biomass Research and Development Board. Also, uh, one that I've been to, copyright.gov, uh, the United States Copyright Office. And finally, our friends at login.gov, the public's one account for government. They launched a crisp new site as well. Looks great. And I am excited about all of these new sites and uh, there's a lot of great work here. So much good stuff. Uh, and I can say that I've really appreciated uh, GitHub issues and pull requests that these teams have added to the USWDS project while completing their own work. Um, building your own site usually means finding bugs and opportunities for improvement in the USWDS guidance and code base. Adding issues and fixes back into the system is it's nice and it's also like paying it forward for future users and it makes everyone's experience better. So, so thank you to, to everyone who, who uses it and, uh, and uh, calls out issues and, uh, and submits pull requests, it really makes a difference. Next up, product updates. Uh, as promised, I am sad to say that the USWS 2.10.1 patch release is Still not out. This is largely my fault, uh, as it's taken longer than I would have liked to review all the new work. There was some um, complicated stuff in there around doing some uh, color calculations and a number of other things. Uh, there's a bunch in there that's good, uh, but the review's taken longer and it's still not out. But it is very close to being finished. I uh, didn't want to rush it out before the call, and I'm like 90% confident that it'll release tomorrow. And I hope it's worth the wait. Sorry about that. On the bright side, uh, hot on the heels of 2.10.1, we're busy prepping for design system 2.11, our next uh, sort of minor update. This new release has a number of highly requested components and I can't wait to show it off next month. Uh, 2.11 will feature uh, icon list, uh, which is essentially a, a bulleted or unordered list that uh, allows you to use uh, sort of custom icons for bullets, plus modal, uh, sortable tables, um, prefixes and suffixes for uh, custom inputs, and 404 page template. So all of that coming up in 2.11. And the long awaited sketch and Adobe XD design uh, assets. Uh, it's going to be a good one. And uh, it should be out uh, right at the end of this month, uh, or uh, I guess if, if I'm being real, uh, more likely the early March, first week of March, probably. And that's what's going on in the world of USWDS releases. So now uh, for what we're, what we're doing this year for the USWDS 2021 roadmap. Um, and to give a bit more context to where we're going uh, and uh, what we're thinking about for this year, um, makes sense to take a quick look back uh, at kind of where we've been. So this dot, um, 
this dot is, is the US web design system uh, or, or, or the seed of the US web design system uh, when it was just an idea uh, in the mind of Molly Ruskin, who was formerly with the US Digital Service. Uh, so she pitched her idea to the precursor to the 10X project, uh, which was called quite straightforwardly, uh, the Great Pitch. Uh, and this was May, 2015. And uh, her pitch, her idea started, you know, what if we had a living style guide for the federal government? Well, what if? Uh, and it continued on a proposed approach, uh, make the best thing the easiest thing. And, you know, really, uh, it couldn't have been <laughs> said better, you know, right from the start, make the best thing the easiest thing. And the pitch goes on to discuss some of the risks and opportunities uh, with this style guide. Uh, and it says, quote, you know, ownership and adoption are the singular uh, most threatening challenge. A government-wide style guide needs to feel like something everyone owns, is excited to use and can benefit from. If groups who will use it feel like they're unable to shape it, they'll resist adoption. Guidance from design system experts suggests that we design iteratively with input from real teams, building digital services throughout. The more teams we're able to line up to contribute, uh, the more we can demonstrate broad application and design for various needs. Longer term, the style guide must indeed be living, must respond to and continuously evolve to include new needs and patterns as they arise. If done well, this will allow teams to feel they can contribute to and benefit from something of which they're a part. And, you know, about five and a half years later, you know, that's as true as ever. Uh, the design system needs to grow and evolve with its community and from its community. Uh, it needs to be an expression of its community and those who would be a part of its community. So four months, a brief four months uh, after uh, this great pitch in May of 2015, uh, the design system had its first public release, USWDS 0.8, September 2015, launched with 13 components and templates. A year and a half later, uh, and just about exactly four years ago with uh, development support from both the US Digital Service and 18F, we launched USWDS 1.0 with uh, 23 components and templates. In 2018, we changed our name, <laughs> remember that? And now what was once the US uh, uh, web design standards uh, became the US web design system. Uh, and then um, Somewhat by surprise, a key character in the story appeared uh, just as we were winding up our work on uh, US Web Design System 2.0, uh, the 21st Century Integrated Digital Experience Act, uh, which, uh, which uh, 21st century idea, if you've heard of it uh, like that, which among other things said that any website of an executive agency that's made available to the public after the date of enactment of this act, shall be in compliance with the website standards of the technology transformation services of the General Services Administration. Uh, and this changed things for us. Uh, and we knew we had to get ready to grow. Uh, fortunately, a new major version of the design system was just around the corner. As I mentioned, USWDS 2.0, not really any new components, but pretty much everything new under the hood, uh, really built to grow. Uh, built to adapt and built to evolve. In January of 2020, GSA and TTS published the TTS website standards, which really cemented that relationship between 21st century idea and the design system maturity model. The design system really uh, was and is now here to stay, uh, and we needed to get to work uh, to better serve the needs of our growing audience. Um, in a year, we pretty much nearly like doubled the number of components and templates in the design system from around 26 to like 50. Uh, and of course, patching bugs, making all kinds of other improvements along the way as well. 2020 was a big year uh, and a consequential year in many ways. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic and uh, emergency response became the focus of our new component work and our research to understand what teams needed most critically from the design system 
and what was holding teams back from adopting the design system. Uh, and like most of us, we learned a lot in 2020. And as we move into 2021, uh, our near term trajectory should bring us to about 55 components and templates very soon uh, uh, with, with 2.11 that I just mentioned. And also our, our footprint is growing. <laughs> Over the last year, our, our sessions per month on design system powered sites has almost tripled uh, from uh, 100 million sessions a month uh, in January of 2020 to uh, 275 million sessions a month in January of 2021. Uh, and that's that's a lot, but you know there's still like a long way to go. We've we've grown tremendously in the last five years, but uh, but last month we were still at only about 12% of total government-wide sessions on about 25% of executive branch domains using the design system. And while we're five years in, uh, and it may seem as though you've been hearing about us and building with us forever. <laughs> it's still like early days. It's still early days for the design system. Uh, at five, you know, we're, we're preschoolers. Uh, we're rapid, rapidly maturing, uh, eager to learn new things. And as I said, we talked to a lot of folks and conducted a lot of interviews uh, in 2020, particularly toward the end of 2020. And the design system issues that we heard were, were largely focused not on features, but really on, on like getting started. Um, uh, and if you remember this graph from, from just a moment ago, like this, this pink line is everyone not yet using the web design system. So uh, it's sort of important for us to keep in mind that really like, you know, most USWDS projects like haven't even started yet. <laughs> um, and we can't take anything for granted. Uh, 21st century idea it doesn't get a project started. It doesn't help teams work together or get code shipped. Like we have to earn each site that uses the design system and each team that uses us. Um, we can't we can't rest. We can't uh, we can't just say that oh yeah we're required. Our our job is done. Um, that's not what we can do. Uh, so. If in 2015, we started by, you know, specifically like trying to make the best thing, the easiest thing, you know, that's, that's what we keep doing in 2021. Um, and specifically, uh, we're really going to be working to make it easier, uh, to make the best thing easier, 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 easier. Um, we've grown a lot over the years. And I think that that's sometimes at the expense of, of documentation developer ergonomics and like, just like ease of use for the design system as a product. In our COVID focused research, we, we learned essentially five major things about agency teams uh, who use or want to use the design system. First, um, agency teams want to understand the value and benefits of the design system. They want to know how to get started with the design system. They want to find the right team and resources for their project. And they want to feel engaged with the design system community. And lastly, they want to iteratively improve their digital services over time. So, it's those needs, uh, it's, it's that message that we're hearing that's at the top of our mind for 2021. And it's by restating these needs as problem statements that we're building out the items on our roadmap. Let's get into that. So, you know, how can we better show the value and benefits of the design system? Well, here are a few things that we're going to do. We're going to try. Um, we're going to be publishing uh, our design system uh, journey maps and our design system service blueprint uh, to show how folks are using it and to show uh, just how, how we make journey maps and service blueprints. 
Uh, we're going to be publishing role-based introductions to the design system. So uh, we'll be talking more about how to use the design system and what the design system means, whether you're uh, a project manager or a designer or developer, uh, whether you are a content designer or wherever you're coming from, what's your role uh, in, in using the design system? How can you make the design system work uh, for you? We want to publish the high level system benefits. Uh, we really want to be clear about why it makes sense to use a design system and why it makes sense to use the US web design system. Um, that should be, we should make that as obvious as possible and we should be tailoring what we do to make sure that it's making those benefits uh, and those, uh, to make those benefits like as, uh, as clear as possible and to be working in the service of those benefits. Um, we'll be sort of updating our, our product values, I think, to, uh, to reflect uh, this better, uh, to really um, show how we're working and how we're working in the service of these high level system benefits. Uh, and we'll be working to create and publish design system case studies as well to show how teams use it. Um, what, uh, how valuable it's been, wh where it's worked, uh, how it hasn't worked. Uh, I think we're, we're interested in really digging into how teams are using it and making that information more publicly available. Um, so as new teams come in, they can know uh, what to expect uh, and, and why uh, it can make sense to work with the design system. And we're going to be uh, uh, documenting uh, a number of uh, currently undocumented components. Uh, we, like for instance, <laughs> we definitely have a hero, but the hero isn't uh, included uh, as a separate component on the website. Like if we want to show what the design system has, we have to get all that material out in front of people. Second, you know, how can we make it easier to get started with the design system? Uh, we really want to expand and test our getting started documentation. Um, again, this is probably taking sort of a role-based approach um, and, and thinking about like how we're talking about uh, getting up to speed with the design system, getting a project started quickly, using it, understanding what the design system has to offer. Um, we really want to get that out in front of folks and have it make as much sense as possible. This uh, will probably involve a little bit more uh, multimedia than we, uh, than we currently have. Um, not everyone learns best uh, from, from written docs and from written step-by-steps. So we'll be developing some, uh, some video-based tutorials as well. That's the multimedia I'm talking about, it won't be VR. Um, we want to work to simplify the build and compile process. Uh, this can often be a, a stumbling block at the beginning, just like how do you get, how do you get uh, the styles out? How do you get the, um, uh, how do you make the design system your own uh, by customizing it and recompiling it? We want to make that just as simple as possible. Um, we want to focus key pages on site top tasks. Uh, so that's just like, okay, we, we've got component pages, we've got uh, design token pages, we've got pages where we're talking about introducing the design system. Like, how can we really focus these pages on what on what folks need to find and need to know, and to uh, and to rebuild and test some some key kinds of pages um, based on what we learn. We'd also like to, to do more work around creating more kind of demonstration content, uh, like, a, like a demo site with uh, example settings files um, so that we can connect these to getting started, connect these to tutorials, connect these to, to ways to uh, explore the design system and know what it can do by, uh, by learning like how to theme it uh, and, and to get a little bit more practical uh, when, when doing our getting started guidance. Uh, and we wanted just to continue to improve uh, our guidance, particularly around theming and, and color as well, uh, to show what you can do with the design system, how to make it, uh, how to make it work with, with your audience needs and with your mission. Um, and 
theming settings and color uh, are a big part of that. How can we help managers estimate resources for their project? I think we're we're going to be uh, we're going to be coming back again to this uh, idea of case studies um, and trying to uh, collect more information from teams that have used the design system about what it took what it took to uh, to build what they needed to build um, so that uh, we can we can make that information more available. Uh, we can collect more team composition data from the community and publish that. So that we know uh, what, what does it take uh, to have an effective team uh, building uh, certain kinds of sites with a design system. Uh, we know that folks have experience out there. We know that, uh, that folks are building great sites out there. Um, and the more information that we can collect and present to, to teams that are new to the design system, uh, the more confidence they can have in planning for their projects and getting started. How can we help improve community engagement? Well, you know, first, uh, we can do uh, a more proactive job of asking uh, what the community needs. Um, you know, a very small part of this are, are things like uh, things like uh, you know, polls in, in a monthly call, but I think that that is a uh, is part of what uh, of what we want to continue to to build on is like. We want to know uh, what you need, and we want to be proactive in figuring that out. Uh, we also want to uh, improve our, our contribution guidance. Uh, we know that, that one of the ways that, that we work together is through uh, uh, contributing issues, uh, pull requests, possibly new functionality. And I think more and more uh, as time goes on into more of contributing new components and, and functionality to the design system. What does that take? Uh, what are we looking for in a new component or, or a new piece of functionality? Uh, what do we test for? Or what do we need uh, in a submission like that? We want to improve our, our contribution guidance so that we can be clear uh, about, about what we do and we can better uh, help solicit contributions and to and to work with teams to to uh, put those contributions together. We know teams are building things that should be more broadly available through the design system. We want to work to uh, get those and make those things available. Uh, we also want to just provide better resources for sharing and finding existing implementations. I think one thing that really helps a lot of teams out is just knowing what other teams have worked with the design system. Who's doing this uh, in Drupal? Who's doing this in React? Who's doing this with Federalist? Who's doing this with Jekyll? Um, who's doing this for this kind of project? Uh, we want to do a better job of, of collecting that information and, and presenting that information on, uh, on our website, uh, really, so that so the teams coming to the design system can really get up to speed quickly around who's doing what and know where to look and who to reach out to when they have questions. And generally, we want to just improve our open source software practices. Um, uh, what that means exactly is um, probably still up in the air uh, right now, but we know that the design system is, uh, is open source software and and I think there's, there, there are plenty of things that we could be doing uh, in how we uh, organize our repos, uh, in how we, how we reach out to, to, the, to our contributors to just be, uh, be better, uh, to be clearer, uh, to give better guidance around good first projects or what is, uh, what's expected uh, with, uh, with contributions. Uh, how we manage our issues, how we manage our um, backlog, all of that, uh, I think we can, we can and will improve. And how can we help teams iteratively improve their services over time? Really like kind of, I think, how do you dig into the design system? How do you uh, 
how do you keep up to date with the design system? Uh, how can you scale the improvements of the design system uh, better in your own uh, site and service? I think one thing that we're going to be doing is doing some more inve investigation around uh, component-based based versioning. Uh, there probably will be more to come uh, around this, but, uh, but one thing that can be a challenge with the design system is particularly with, with lots of components in a design system, uh, if one of them ever needs a sort of major or breaking change to that component, uh, that would mean uh, a breaking change to the entire design system. Uh, is there a way to think about the design system where, where components have sort of their own version tracks uh, and, and uh, we can make necessary changes to certain components without necessarily having to make a breaking change to the core mechanic of the design system. Uh, partly this, and this is around just like doing a better job also of uh, communicating how components have changed over time, just in general, adding component change logs to the website. You know, for your site, like we use buttons, we use the header, we use cards, we don't use a lot of these other things. Uh, we are thinking of updating. How have cards changed over the last year? How have buttons changed over the last year? And how can we target updating maybe just these, these specific items um, to, to try to, in general, make, uh, make it easier to stay up to date and lessen the lift uh, when looking to, uh, uh, to update or, uh, or to migrate. And we're also looking to, to do more work around creating something that's closer to a production ready component template. Exactly what this means, again, is still maybe a little bit vague, uh, but, but right now uh, when, for our components, like we pretty much just deliver them as uh, HTML, copy and paste HTML off of our site. And uh, we, we do write templates uh, for these things uh, in, uh, in our in our component library, and we could be doing a better job of, of writing those templates uh, that we use internally and making them more publicly available. We are currently uh, sort of migrating our library uh, out of a library system called Fractal into another called Pattern Lab, and we're moving our uh, internal component templates into a templating language called Twig. How can we make uh, this Twig and Pattern Lab work uh, more publicly accessible? Uh, this could make it easier uh, to, to integrate the design system. Uh, we want to improve our migration page. Uh, uh, started out good, it got bad. Uh, it could, we could do a lot of work in talking about migration. Uh, you know, are a lot of teams right now moving from design system 1.x to 2.x? Probably relatively fewer, uh, but we could be doing a better job of talking about how, how you go through that process. That page is currently a mess. Um, we should also be improving our automated release testing. Uh, you know, part of um, staying up to date with the design system means uh, means uh, getting new releases uh, and, and incorporating them into, into your own projects. And that also means us continuing to improve uh, how well we're, we're testing these new releases. Um, I think any project will always have some bugs that, uh, that creep in when we move from version to version, but, uh, but we want to we want to do everything we can to, to minimize that. Uh, and particularly with more and more components, more and more uh, functionality and interrelated functionality, we have to continue to improve our automated testing so that, uh, uh, so that we can be more confident that what we're releasing doesn't have uh, uh, regressions in it. And, and that teams who, who uh, upgrade to a new version can feel confident and trust that, uh, that they're going to get what they expect and not a bunch of problems that they don't expect. And we also really, I think, want to work to widen the scope of our, of our release communications. Um, 
we do releases on GitHub. We, uh, we, we talk about it uh, in the design system Slack. Uh, what are other ways that we could, uh, we could talk about releases and let folks know that the design system is changing? Does this mean uh, sort of a design system email mailing list? Does this mean better coordination with communities of practice? Does this mean uh, a improved sort of work on social media? Could mean all of those things. But we want to widen the scope of our uh, release and update communications so that folks know that the that either the design system has changed or that we're or that we're working on something that we're looking for feedback that we're looking for testing um, that there are opportunities to uh, to contribute to the future of the design system. So. Um, These are kind of like our, our like, that's sort of what we're thinking about uh, as roadmap items. And these are, and what's up here kind of like our key ideas uh, to keep in mind uh, for 2021. I think a major idea is, uh, as I kind of already mentioned, like it's still early, um, five and a half years in, it's still early. And most design system projects still haven't started. Uh, let's make sure our resources for new users are as strong as they can be. Second kind of key idea that the community makes the system work. Uh, and it was all kind of back in that original USWDS pitch. Um, a government-wide style guide that needs to feel like something everyone owns, is excited to use and can benefit from. It has to respond to and continuously involve to include new needs and patterns as they arise. Done well, this will allow all teams to uh, contribute to and benefit from something of which they are a part. Uh, and you know, not only like feel like they can contribute, like that this contribution is like vital to the success of the system. And not only that, but the connections that a community can forge uh, across projects, teams, agencies, and silos are really central to the ideas of sharing, reuse, collaboration, and skill scaling that make a design system compelling. Uh, the community isn't like something that uh, floats around the margins, uh, sort of like a cloud, like it's really just sort of integrated into why the design system is compelling in the first place. Don't be too big to change. And this is sort of an interesting one, but, uh, but we have to be careful uh, as we get bigger and become more of a large design system to work to mitigate inertia uh, and to keep our process nimble. Specifically, we know that uh, big design system changes can be painful, that migrations take time and energy, that change has a cost. Um, and the more teams and projects use the design system, the greater the overall cost of any change. And this doesn't mean that we can't grow or shouldn't grow. Uh, the design system can uh, and will and, and must grow, uh, but we have to be smart, uh, as smart as we can be about how we build and how we evolve. So the necessary evolution of the design system always has more benefit than cost and that we're always minimizing uh, that cost of change. Um, we don't want to get into a situation where uh, we have like huge big bang change that uh, that everyone across government has to spend a lot of time and energy like reacting to. We want to make change smaller and more incremental and more achievable. And lastly, I think the big one, the main focus is like make it easier make it easier. At this point, this might not need any further elaboration, uh, but this is like the primary theme of the year. Uh, taking what we have uh, and doing what we can do, uh, doing what we can do to reduce the effort it takes to get started, uh, to get building and to work in the service of the public and your mission. Make it easier, make it easier. Uh, and now before uh, we break for questions, a couple points. Yes, some of the pending items on our 2020 roadmap are now kind of like dropped, sadly. This means that we likely will not get to the development of uh, tabs 
uh, advanced layout, glossary, and top tasks components. That's a that's a sad uh, that's a sad little colon and open parentheses there, um, but that is that is that is the case. Um, and also, as we discuss and publish this roadmap, it's worth noting that this is also going to be a bit of a transition year for 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 road mapping for us, uh, and that we're moving to uh, more of a fiscal year calendar from the standard calendar year. So. This means going uh, sort of starting in October and going through September. A little bit weird, uh, but this will really help us with budgets, uh, with planning and performance record keeping. So moving to uh, uh, fiscal year um, planning for road mapping. This means that there are only about 16 remaining sprints in FY 2021. Uh, so we got to get cracking. And finally, we're going to be revisiting this roadmap really every quarter uh, and trying to make necessary changes based on what we've done and what we've learned. Um, so hopefully this will allow us to do the necessary long term planning of road mapping, but leave us some room to make agile adjustments as we go along. So yeah, here we go. Um, and uh, here's the this is um, the uh, current product roadmap is on the website right now. Um, and now I think we can open the floor for Q&A. Um, and also, um, I think we can, we can also, we have a, we have a sort of exit poll as well that we can kind of maybe uh, start up and leave open in the background while we do Q&A. Uh, folks can uh, contribute to that poll and then we can share out the results uh, at the end of the hour. So I think that, uh, that Amy is here and she can, instead of me like frantically reading uh, the, uh, the comments, uh, uh, Amy can help and read them out uh, and we can answer them together. And we had a ton of questions come in via the chat. I've tried to cluster them together so we can talk about some of the topics together. Cool. One of the first questions was, is the roadmap up to date? Uh, yes. <laughs> so um, the roadmap that is on the site right now is up to date with our, our current, the current status of everything that's on the roadmap. This includes items that were on the 2020 roadmap and new items that we're adding to the 2020 road, 2021 roadmap. So if you see it on the site, it is up to date. I've also, we also added uh, uh, an updated uh, uh, tag on, on that page so that you can see when we updated that page. And you can see that that was today. Question roadmap related, why were tabs canceled? Why were tabs canceled? I guess because we didn't get to them, and and they didn't they didn't fit as well into uh, what we knew we had to focus on for 2021. Uh, they didn't we weren't canceled because they're a bad idea. Uh, they were really just because we didn't get to them, and we have uh, a lot of stuff that we know we need to we need to focus on instead for 2021. So it was sort of a, 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 a painful cut. Out to the future, have there been any considerations of establishing a CDN to serve the design system? Um, I think that that's, it's, I think it's a valid idea. There are a couple, a couple of things have, have there's some things that we might be able to to better serve from a CDN. Uh, one thing that's kept us from from using a CDN is that for the style sheets, there's so much that depends on customization and and local compiling to really make it work that we can't do something. It's it's less helpful to share a pre-compiled version of Design System CSS. Uh, it largely has to be um, 
uh, modified. Uh, it works best when it's modified for, for your own system. Uh, and that's prevented us from really thinking about it seriously. Um, though there are ways, uh, I, there are possible opportunities for, for the JavaScript potentially, and there's maybe some things down the road that we could better use uh, a CDN for. Roadmap and into some policy related questions. Does 21st century IDEA require new government sites to use the design system code base, or is it more speaking to the principles defined by the design system? It speaks specifically to the design system maturity model, um, but uh, part of part of the model is is about increasing maturity over time. Um, so I mean, it's really, I think, our position that if you're starting something new up right now, you're in a way better place uh, if you're starting using the design system code. Uh, I mean, obviously, you want to you want to use uh, principles and and best practice UX guidance as well. Um, you want to you want to use that as the foundation for your work. Uh, but if you're not starting to use design system code when you have an opportunity at at the beginning, you're setting yourself up for for more work down the road as you try to retrofit as you increase as you increase your maturity. Uh, it tends to be a, a better idea to try to uh, try to get started with code when you have the opportunity and don't uh, don't start by digging yourself into a hole. To this from a contractor who says that in their experience agencies are not seeing that the that the design system is required. And as contractors, they have to argue that point. So because they do believe in the design system, what is GSA doing to push this as a requirement? Hmm. I don't know if I, if I can answer that. Um, uh, I don't know, do, do you have any other insight on this, Amy? Um, I, I, I mean, I know that, that we, we we are pushing in every way that we can push as as the as the design system and and as our you know in every sort of engagement that we have. But I don't know uh, if there's any higher level or more or something else that's going on to to make that case or to make that point. About um, some executive business cases or um, some other teams could use to make the case to colleagues, whether it's uh, management or uh, budget staff or perhaps um, program managers, et cetera. So some sort of kind of by user business cases that demonstrates the value of the design system. And perhaps some of that collateral could be helpful. And certainly we're interested in hearing what your sticking points are in making that argument to make sure that we are being as clear and articulate about it being a requirement as possible. For sure. Through the questions, there's a set about kind of components and integrations. So what are our plans to support more application design rather than just content focused website design? Yeah, so I think, uh, I think we, we do think that the, that the design sh system should be, uh, should be usable, uh, should be usable and better usable for, for applications. Um, definitely, uh, definitely the design system is, is uh, not, uh, not for applications. Uh, we're seeing projects uh, that have a strong application focus launch using the design system. Uh, Dawson at the tax court, uh, sam.gov. Um, there are there are there are teams that that use the design system uh, for applications. Does the design system come with all of that application functionality built into it? Uh, 
not as much as it could. And I think that there's a lot that, that we can still learn about what the design system might need to do to better support more uh, application functionality out of the box. Certainly the design language that the, that the design system has now and, uh, and a way of writing uh, styles could, could apply to, to applications as well as uh, uh, scare quotes, conventional websites. Um, but, uh, but I think we, we do think that, uh, that there's a lot you can do with the design system now for applications. We've done a lot with uh, form controls uh, and uh, icons and process indicators uh, over the last few months. So there are more and more of, of the building blocks of, um, of more full featured app stuff in the design system and one of the things we hope to get out of uh, out of 2021's work is a better way of uh, of getting new work back into the design system. So we see that teams are building things like like Sam and Dawson. Are there ways that we can work to get some of that work back in the into the design system more easily to help out subsequent uh, app based projects? So. Uh, there's still a lot to do when it comes to using the design system with apps. There's a lot that teams are already doing. There's a lot that we have built in, uh, but we still, I think, need to, to learn more about good leverage points that we might be able to find with apps. What are, what are some key things that we might need to think about uh, uh, building into the system that would really help uh, uh, developers of more app-based projects? So I see we're six minutes out. So I'm going to try to combine a few questions together. Okay. <laughs> and so hopefully I'm not bundling too much together here. What are we do? Do we plan to release any supported components like React, Web Components, or Angular? Uh, there's also a question about our intentions for Axure assets, and another set of questions where folks are interested in Pattern Lab and Twig. Yeah, so I think we're still a ways off from, from delivering something like a React component or a web component uh, with the, uh, as, as a sort of canonical or, or, uh, or, or one of our delivery formats. Um, I think it, something like that uh, would make a big difference. Um, I think it would, it would make a big difference in, in ease of uh, upgrade and ease of use for the design system. And I think we want to be getting ourselves into a position to, to begin to realistically consider um, doing something like that. Uh, I know we're, we are starting to have more conversations around web components. Uh, we've seen some good implementations built uh, with React. Um, I don't think we're ready yet to begin uh, releasing uh, either one of those, but I think the work in 2021 will hopefully begin to set us up for what some bigger changes that we might be considering uh, next. And, and I think it's fair to think of something like React or Web Components or some other uh, more, uh, some better uh, templated components as, as something we'll deliver in the future, uh, but it's not on the immediate roadmap, but it's, 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 a, it's, it's definitely percolating. Someone in the chat was commenting that one of the frequent questions that comes up is whether the design system can be used as a front end framework over existing platforms, um, platforms as a service or SaaS, and how easy it is to integrate components and how, uh, commented also how that's uh, typically a blocker to starting from scratch. And there was some response about there being reasons why other teams have then built their own design systems based on USWDS on their own stack. And then a whole bunch of plus ones <laughs> regarding the solutions and front end framework questions. 
So do you have any thoughts about the design system being used as a front end framework over existing platforms? Um, so like using it sort of as like a, I don't know, like a, like a skin or something for, uh, I don't even know what, uh, what I might, what one of those uh, might be exactly, but um, I think that I think that there's a, a potentially a, a, a lot of opportunity in thinking of the design system as a as a layer um, that you could that you could layer into some existing solution. Um, if that solution gives you uh, the opportunity to to give it its own uh, CSS or to or to rewrite modules in it potentially, um, like. I think integrating the design system into into something like that could be could be super useful, uh, and it, I think it would be possible and plausible as, as well. Uh, though I admit I don't know enough about maybe some of the systems that that we're referring to here to know for sure. Uh, but I do like to think of the design system as a layer and a layer that could be uh, integrated into into some other solution. <laughs> it looks like we're about two minutes out. So I think this could be our final question. Is there an authoritative list of government agencies that use the design system or government sites that use the design system? And if so, where can they find it? Uh, kind of. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, is it fair to say, Amy, that we we kind of we 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 have our own list, and it is now out of sync with what is on the website? That is fair to say, and we are hoping to update it soon. Um, if you go to the website and go under "Get Started" and then take a look at the showcase, I will post the link in the chat, and we'll also share it in the recap that we post to Slack. But again, you can navigate to it on the site by finding the showcase on designsystem.digital.gov. But that's definitely something that is, I think, explicitly sort of on our, our roadmap to, to improve that, to, to improve how we're talking, how we're uh, making those sites uh, more findable uh, and, to, and to even perhaps go from there uh, to, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Where, where possible, like connecting some of this stuff to, you know, what, uh, what, what are they using to build this site? Is this a Drupal site? Uh, you know, what, how can we have more than just a list of sites, but how can we have some more robust resources around using this list of sites to, uh, to learn even more about the project? Uh, so that's definitely something we're going to be working to improve. Well, thanks for leaving as much time as you did for the Q&A. Unfortunately, <laughs> we still didn't get to all the questions, um, but certainly we have noted who's asked the questions and you can join us in the public Slack channel and we'll be responding there in our recap as well as uh, reaching out individually if we can to respond to your questions. Yeah, uh, I hope, uh, yeah, we're not just, uh, we're not just ignoring them. So we will, we'll follow up. Uh, but yeah, so uh, as, as Amy alluded, uh, you know, up here are uh, a lot of the, uh, the channels you can use to, to get in touch with the design system. Uh, we have our design system Slack, uh, USWDS public. Uh, uh, you can get there uh, by going to chat.atnf.gov to sign up for that. Uh, you can also uh, reach us uh, in GitHub. You can send us an email. Uh, or you can check out what we have on our website at designsystem.digital.gov. Next month, we'll likely be focused on a lot of the uh, new features and components that I've mentioned in 2.11. Um, and then uh, my hope is for, for a lot of the remainder of this year, we can, we'll have a lot of, of these calls that can be focused on what, what uh, less on design system features and more on what teams are doing with it and techniques that you can use to to use the design system uh, more effectively. And with that, that might be the end of the hour. 
thank you so much for for coming by uh, and for and for asking as many good questions as you have.